But over the to me, she went missing. Almost two years, and he said phone number disconnected. He didn't have an address. He looked on Facebook. Mm -hmm. so I guess how, how intense was the effort to figure out where she was, who she's with, and how she's doing? It, see, though, I met Nan several times and talked to her. Nan is a wonderful lady. I had no reason not to trust Nan, and I knew Erica wanted to stay there and did not want to come back here. So I was not going to sit there and try to force Erica back when she was doing just fine and having fun and being with her grandmother. I just, um, there was no reason for me. I had no reason to doubt there was anything going on with Erica. How were you handling school and checking up with her to make sure that she was She uh, was homeschooled and How we... For well, the lady up there says she had her, the next door neighbor was a teacher and a tutor. And that she was getting her, getting tutored with her because Erica has a, a huge learning disability. She's very, she's, if you would say equivalent to grade levels, she's probably three levels behind. And she went to public school here until it was, it would get embarrassing for her because all her the groups that she was with they actually wouldn't even call her at a grade level she would have to go to another room by herself with other kids that was way younger than her and it would get in very embarrassing and she did not like that so um we homeschooled her and nia knew all about the homeschool she knew about all of her little tests and her what books and everything that we worked with and she said there was a teacher in its store that would help her with this and that she would put her back into public school. Yeah. Now, I don't know if she did that. Then uh, the missing persons report is filed by James. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, I'll ask some questions about him in a minute. But then a couple days, so the poster comes out, the, new, the news release comes out, the story comes out, and then the sheriff's office says, Parents did provide some information and possible leads as to the location of Erica Parsons, advising that she may be in the Asheville area with relatives. But after following up on this information, sheriff's investigators have determined that the information the parents provided was not true. They say sheriff's office investigators have followed up on information on possible locations of Erica Parsons across the state of North Carolina, but so far none of the information provided by Casey and Sandy Parsons have been found to be factual. To that, you say what? They're lying. And he warned us that he would say stuff like that when we got our lawyer. That they proved there was the other lady there, Strawberry. And we also got told um, Billy Goodman's mother is from Asheville. And she resided in Mooresville. And I don't know, I don't remember what they said her name was. And the strawberry lady has lived everywhere, including also Morrisville. This is all comes from the detective. And there is a Kelly, and she does have kids. Just like um, the phone call with Billy at the police station when they called, he denied ever even having Eric as a kid. He never had a kid, he said. And he has three kids. We told them all everything. So why they're saying that the factual thing, if there was a strawberry, that Lady Strawberry, Anna Kelly, I have no idea because they know exactly who them people are. They've talked to them. Why would they lie? In your, I, mean, I have no idea. Saying that they're lying, so there's lie. a Strawberry and there's a Kelly. They've talked to them. I do not know. So who are you saying is lying? Is it the investigators or the people they're talking to? The detectives are. The one I've only talked to one detective, Detective Malden. I haven't talked to anybody else. There was a police officer in the room on the second day. I don't even know what his name was. Do you feel the information that you were given from Nan and some of those other folks was incorrect? Honestly, I do not. I really believe there is Nan and Irene, and I know there's the Strawberry and Kelly. I, no, I don't. I really believe them. So you don't think they could have given you fake names or no. one thing over the other? No, Where do you I don't. Think Erica is now? 
I honestly believe she's still in Asheville with Nan. I really do. They said strawberries in Carolina Beach. I don't know if they've moved down there or what, but when Erica went in September and November, she told of the, the Biltmore house, the big house. So I know she's seen it. She had never, I've never took her to seeing it. So, and she rode horses in the mountains and she talked of that, even about to my other kids and everything. And again, just so, to clarify, you said this Janice Jackson might also be the same person as the same strawberry. It's strawberry. And that, and that is Erica's biological father that yeah. you claim denies that he has kids. Yeah. What, he said that over the what's phone. His name? Billy Goodman went I know it's Goodman. Was it Billy? I think it's was Billy Goodman. I think he, I think they said Billy Dean Goodman is what the detective said. Okay. Um what school did she go to here? She went to Boston Elementary in Rockwell, and then she also went to Mount Pleasant in Concord. Well, Mount Pleasant, it was the Cabarrus County School Systems. How was her uh, relationship home? How was it here with, um, with you guys and the kids? It was good. It was good. Now, she had a very special bond to the little ones, but she was their bigger sister, and she was here when they was born, and she loved it. Why did she want to stay with Irene instead of coming back here? She loved her grandma. So it wasn't the case so much that she was unhappy here so much as she wanted to be happy with her grandmother. They, they, was, they gave her more stuff than we could materialize. Because even here when she would come back in September and November, it would, if we didn't give her the clothes and stuff that she wanted, she would be like, I'm going to call Nan. They'll get it for me. You have to understand at this time this this household was in turmoil over James. Mm -hmm. uh, he had assaulted her in August of 2011. He'd been arrested, spent 20 some days in jail, uh, been released. Uh, he had what psychological problems? Yes, he, he did. He committed at one in point. Presbyterian Hospital. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he, had, you were sick you had had I think part of the, the warrant said that you had uh, actually he had pulled your your G tube in G -tube my bag out of your bag mm -hmm. out your call, call yeah it wasn't a, yeah yeah and uh, at that time he was going through you were ill he mm -hmm. was going through legal situation uh, yeah. and it was it, it wasn't you know, it'd be easy to believe that a, a child could have an idyllic setting somewhere else that they'd rather be in. Yes, uh, and it, I mean, when here, when she lives here in the last few months that she did, it was him going to work, me at the hospital, nobody really here but older Jamie, and which was my older son, and um, my oldest son had already left and got married at that point. He did not live here. And he was fixing to go into the Army. And I, my hospital visits wasn't a two or three night stay. We're talking two and three weeks, maybe four weeks. So she would be here with James a lot. Um, we call him Jamie. Then I would come home and at that, during that period, it would, I was here maybe a week sometimes before I go right back in the hospital. And then Jamie was doing a lot and there was a lot of stress here in the last months well when she went there and like i said it she would come back a day or two and want to go right back she'd be willing to call her it'd be like i want to go ride the horses let me just go this weekend and no 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 and she was ready to go right back and uh, i'm sorry that's you said james uh, was committed to presbyterian yes he was or? um he did he had bipolar and he would he would be suicidal one minute and maybe even an hour later real hyper talkative couldn't get him be quiet and you would think he's okay in the next minute you'd have to go watch him because and look for where he's at because he gets suicidal again real mean he had a lot of anger a lot of anger do you um the warrants say assaulting three-year-old fighting an arm it also said threatening the same child when he was then five. 
assault on a female, yourself, and my daughter, one of the sisters, in some sort of threatening manner. Do you believe if Erica was home a lot with him, I and mean, there's no court record that we know of that says he assaulted her, but do you think something was going on? Maybe he allegedly assaulted her, or did she ever tell you? She would just tell me he hollered at her a lot and stuff. Um, she's never really said anything about him assaulting her. Um, Jamie did every one of us like that. We was all a little bit scared of Jamie. Just even after yesterday they put his mugshot up on TV, we was all worried about whether he was going to come last night and show up. No, that's just him. We've all feared Jamie. Was he asked to leave? Um, we had to call the cops. On June the 7th was the last day that Jamie was in this house. I think it was June the 7th. Yeah. And why, why was he kicked out? He beat me until I was unconscious that day. And he had slammed my eight-year-old into that door right over there.